Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to my new video. Now my name is Jimmy and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create a more stylized landscape uh, shot like this. Um, now I'm just going to be going over the editing process and I'll quickly explain how I took the photo. And this is just a follow up tutorial to my other landscape tutorial uh, which has recently got a bit more popular. Um, so thanks everyone for watching that or if you haven't seen that be sure to watch that since I go over editing a more realistic kind of uh, cool looking landscape shots. Um, but for now, let's just get started on this. So I'm going to press I to bring up my camera information. So you can see I took this on a 5D Mark III um, on a 16 to 35 uh, lens at 24 millimeters, a 25 second exposure at f16 and at 400 ISO. Now the reason I shot this at 25 seconds is because I kind of wanted the water to smooth out a lot here and I wanted the clouds which are barely visible to be slightly blurred. Now unfortunately there weren't many clouds um, otherwise it would have been a lot better shot, I think. So we're going to be going over how to turn something like this into something like this. Now you can see uh, there's quite a big difference between the two. Um, for one, I straightened out the image. Um, and yeah, I just added this kind of cool purplish color to the overall image. Um, I've enhanced the contrast quite a bit and made it look a little bit better, I think. Um, so let's just reset this and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is straighten up our image. So we're going to bring up our crop tool up here and just adjust the angle until we're happy. So about there should be fine. Then what we're going to do is just probably crop this side in a little bit closer. And that's good right there. Okay, so let's get started on the actual adjustments. Now for our white balance, we're going to change this to auto. And from there, we can just slightly adjust the temperature to a bit more of a warmer color and bring the tint to a slight more magenta color. Now you can see since the final image had that kind of uh, purplish split tone to it, and that is pretty much how we're going to do most of it with the tint slider here in just a moment, as well as the split toning column. Okay, so I pretty much correctly exposed this in camera, so I'm not going to touch that or contrast. And I'm going to bring down my highlights here to about 20, bring up my shadows to about 15, bring up my whites and then bring down my blacks. And you can see if we just reset that quickly, it's pretty much just added a bit more contrast to the image and making it look a bit more detailed. Now, if you're wondering how I'm adjusting my sliders in small increments like that, I'm just holding my mouse over the slider and pressing the up and down arrow keys. Okay, so moving down to clarity, I'm going to bring this up to 20, I'm going to bring vibrance up to 30 and saturation up to 10. Um, so now quick before and after, you can see there's quite a significant difference already. Now obviously this will vary depending on your photos, so don't think you can just copy my settings exactly, but this is just a guideline to show the type of things that you can actually do. Uh, so moving down to tone curve, going to set this to medium uh, to add a bit more contrast back into the image. We're not going to worry about hue, saturation, and luminance. And moving down to split toning. Now I'm going to set our hue value to 60 for our highlights. Going to set our saturation to 30, our balance to 40 our hue on our shadows to 265 to get that magenta look and our saturation on our shadows to 30. Uh, so you can see if we toggle that on and off, we're getting that kind of nice uh, green and magenta or brown and magenta kind of split tone happening and I'm pretty happy with that. Now moving down to details, I'm going to use my usual sharpening which is from SLR Lounge. Um, so that is sharpening amount 70, radius 1.5, uh, detail 10 and masking 30. Then we're going to add just a tiny bit of noise reduction and that should be good about there. Okay, so moving down to lens corrections, we're not going to worry about enabling our profile corrections since I kind of like the slight vignette happening and I'm actually going to add to it. Uh, so going to our manual tab here. Uh, so moving down to the slider here, we're going to bring our mount down to about 15 and our midpoint all the way down to about 10. Now we're going to go down to post crop vignetting down here and add quite a bit more. So we're going to dial this down to negative 20. We're going to make our midpoint all the way down to zero, our roundness negative 75, our feather 80, and our highlights 50. So if we toggle that on and off, you can see we're especially adding quite a bit of uh, saturation and a bit of darkness to the water here. It's not so noticeable in the sky, but we're about to fix that now. Uh, so that's it for our base adjustments, and we're going to go up to our graduated filter option up here, or press M. Now we're going to reset this by holding our Alt key and hitting reset, which will appear here. 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is add quite a bit of magenta in using our tint option here. So about 17 should work fine. Uh, we're going to drop our exposure by about two and a half stops, uh, like so. Then we're going to bring up our clarity to about 10 to help bring out the edges of the clouds and this hill here and the tops of the buildings. Then we're going to bring up our saturation quite a bit here since we want that really magenta looking sky. Um, and that's pretty much it for our um, graduated filter. And now if we click up here and drag down, uh, hold shift to keep it perfectly level, you can see it's having quite a major effect. Um, so if we quickly delete that and then re-enable it, you can see we get these really nice dark corners. We get this really nice uh, purplish kind of tone to the sky. And I think it's all looking pretty damn nice. Um, so that's pretty much it there. And one final step we can do is grabbing an adjustment brush here. Again, resetting this and then you can just add a tiny bit of exposure in. So half a stop and then bring up the shadows a little bit. And what you can do is just paint over these uh, trees here and you know fill in all these dark areas on the building and make it look a bit nicer with the lighting um so that's pretty much it right there i hope this helped um if you did find it interesting you can check out my other tutorials um so i've done ones on editing dark portraits like kind of my product photography shot of my glasses and a few other things like that um so you can also check out my deviantart gallery here um, I made a tutorial for this yesterday, you can see the final image here of this one um, which I've done a bit of a creative crop here and added a nice border to make it look kind of like a panoramic shot. Um, so yeah, I've done quite a few tutorials on many of these photos so be sure to check out my channel and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more. Now as always feel free to leave comments down in the comments section uh, suggesting other images you'd like to see or even images you'd like me to explain how I captured them and stuff like that. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.